Welcome to Bloom Physics. My name is Clifton Bloom, and this is the very first video in a whole series of videos that's going to teach you a lot of cool physics. Now, you may have heard that physics is a very challenging course, and that is true, but it is also a very fun course. And we're going to do lots of fun things, but today we're going to start out by teaching you how to use a meter stick. And I know that doesn't sound very interesting, but um, I promise you I'm going to teach you some things that are different than what you already know about using a meter stick. So let's just start here by asking, would you trust this person? Well, kind of hard to say, but uh, do you see that they are a liar? And it's written all over their face. A cursive word liar is written there. Okay, so if this person were to say, this pencil is 8.32467 seven eight five nine three centimeters long you would say liar okay. and if this person were to say eight centimeters long for the length of that pencil you would also say liar the truth lies somewhere between not having enough decimal places shown and having too de too many decimal places shown we want to be absolutely truthful in all of our measurements Science is an unconditional love of reality. It's trying to discover what is real. And we want to be truthful with our measurements so we can aid in that pursuit. Sometimes you can be dishonest uh, unintentionally. So we want to teach you how to be honest with your measurements. The first thing we need to understand about a measurement is that no measurement is ever exact. No one in the universe knows the exact length of that pencil. You can only do a measurement to within a certain range. I don't know exactly how long that pencil is, but I know it's bigger than this number and it's smaller than that number. The measurement or how long it is falls within a certain range. And when you're measuring something and you're writing down decimals, let's say we know what this one is, we know what that one is, you're going to come to a point where one of your digits is a guess. It's unavoidable. You're going to always come to some point where you're guessing at that last digit. And so the guess is always the last non-zero digit. Uh, sometimes a zero could be your guess. So like if we say the dinosaurs went extinct 65 million years ago, uh, the five right here is our last non-zero uh, digit, so we are implying that that number there is our guess. Uh, it could be that this number was our guess, and I will show you in the next video when we talk about significant figures how to show that. Okay, the last digit is always going to be a guess. And then if we take a measurement and we make it a guess, we also also have to indicate how good of a guess we think we made. We have to include a plus or minus value. So we can't just write down the number if we measure it. We also say, hey, that's a guess. Well, how good of a guess did I make? So you'd say plus or minus a million. And that's typically what scientists refer to when they say that the dinosaurs went extinct 65 million years ago. It's give or take a million or so. This is Pikes Peak. It's in Colorado. It's also known as America's Mountain. It's not the tallest mountain in America, uh, nor is it the tallest mountain in um, Colorado. It's just a famous mountain because people coming across the plains uh, would see that and know that they've arrived at the Rockies. Zebulon Pike was an explorer about the time of Lewis and Clark, and he did a survey, took some measurements, did some calculations, and he stated, this is historical record, that Pikes Peak is 18,581 feet tall. Now, if one of those digits is a guess, the last digit written down is your guess, which means he's absolutely certain about the, the one, the eight, the five, and this eight, and he's only guessing at the one there. He's implying that he was able to measure, give or take, a number in that spot right there and not very good 
Um, Stephen Long was also an explorer about the time of Lewis and Clark as well. And he did his survey and took some measurements. And again, this number is part of historical record, but he said it was 11,507.5 feet. That's the last digit there. So he's saying that he was certain about all those numbers and he was guessing about this number there. And uh, so he was implying that he could measure give or take a tenth of a foot because there's a number in the ten tenths position. Well, nowadays we accept that it's 14,115 feet, give or take five feet. So Zebulon Pike and Stephen Long were wrong, but they were inadvertently dishonest about uh, their measurements. If instead of saying 18,581 feet, Pike had said Pike's Peak is 19,000 feet, give or take 5,000 feet, I would say, hey, that's a fine measurement, okay? And if Stephen Long had said 12,000 feet, give or take 3,000 feet, great, no problem, no dishonesty there. And if we put those numbers on a number line here, 10,000 here and 24,000 here, Zebulon Pike said it was 19,000 feet, give, or, or if he had said it was 19,000 feet, give or take 5,000 feet, he would have been stating that he measured it to within this range. And if Stephen Long had said it was 12,000 feet, give or take 3,000 feet, he would say that it was measured within that range. Remember, we never know the actual value of a measurement. We can only know its measurement to within a certain range. And no matter who measures or no matter what instrument they're measuring, the reality should overlap here. So, you know, Zebulon Pike's number was way off to the right here and Stephen Long's was too small, but they should have overlapped in the reality, somewhere between 14,000 and 15,000. And an interesting fact that was that prior to nine, uh, 2002, Pike's Peak was always known as being 14,110 feet, give or take 10 feet. So it, didn't, it doesn't mean that Pikes Peak changed its height, it's just we got more uh, refined in our measurement. We're gonna talk about the word precision a little later. But if we had a number line here, 14,100 and 14,120, uh, now we know that it's 15,115, give or take five. Previously it was 14,110, give or take uh, 10, but they still overlap in the reality of how tall Pikes Peak really is. So let's see if we can measure this yellow line here. And one thing to understand is that if you're doing this on a smartphone, these lines are super, super, super close together. I'm doing this on a computer monitor, so um, it will make a little bit more sense for how I'm seeing it because these lines are not quite as far apart. But if we look at this, we can clearly see that it's that yellow line is bigger than nine, but it's not quite up to ten. So I'm pretty sure, but I'm I'm certain that that's a nine there, nine point something. I can also see that it made it past uh, point four, but it didn't quite make it up to point five. So I'm I'm certain with that number as well. What I'm guessing at is if I div imagine ten equal divisions here, I am guessing that it fell on the eighth division. Someone else may have guessed a nine there, someone else may have guessed a seven or something. But that's a guess, and to be totally truthful, I have to say how good of a guess I made. So typically, when the divisions are pretty small here, the best you can do is half of the smallest division. The smallest division here is 0.1, and we can guess to 0 0.05, half the smallest division. So that measurement, I am saying, should I am confident that it should fall somewhere between 9.45 and 9. Point, I said that wrong. 9.43 and 9.53. That give or take that. Now this ruler is the same as this ruler here. So theoretically, this ruler should be able to measure to half the smallest division. But what I'm measuring is a little more vague. 
it's a it's a rope here that's been cut and frayed so it, it's um, not a real definite length in this case um, maybe I can only guess that it was maybe 9.5 and I'm gonna say that it was give or take 0.2 this is in the tenths position so this also has to be in the tenths position I'm saying its measurement is somewhere between 9.3 and 9.7 uh, the reason I'm doing that is because we have air on this side and we have air on this side maybe I could only give it to within a millimeter here and a millimeter here well that would be within two millimeters altogether so even though the ruler itself could measure to 0.05 what I was measuring was vague and I had to acknowledge that in my measurements school bus here again the the meter stick was able to go to 0.05 uh, centimeters or 0.5 millimeters but if I lined up a whole bunch of meter sticks here I would see that it was about 13 uh, definitely 13 whole meter sticks and I kind of had to guess there um, I'm gonna guess that it was 0.7 meters that was my guess so then I have to say how good of a guess I made and I'm gonna say give or take a tenth of a meter which means uh, it's 10 centimeters okay so best I could do is maybe give or take 10 centimeters by the time we bump all these um, meter sticks up to each other all right let's let's look at how that yellow line would be measured on different meter sticks here so here this is 0 and this is 10 I have to imagine 10 equal divisions kinda guess it's on the seventh division and because it's big and I can imagine well I'm gonna say give or take one centimeter here it's a little smaller maybe I can't quite see how close it is there but I can clearly see it was six not quite up to seven I imagine how many divisions are between there and I think it fell on the seventh division but because the space in between here is a little smaller instead of saying 0 0.1 uh, I'm gonna say 0 0.2 a little less certain but with this broken up into smaller divisions I can clearly see that that's 0 0.6 0 0.67 and then I'm guessing where in between it fell looks to me like it fell on the third one but this is maybe where that rule of half the smallest division is really gonna kind of come into play here that when it's real small like this really the best you can do is half of the smallest division okay so uh, as the meter stick is broken up into finer and finer parts we can get more and more decimals there okay now if I were to ask you to measure all three of these lines you might be tempted to say hey they're all six centimeters long and you write down six centimeters in your lab book and call it good well that's not honest because remember always one number is going to be a guess here if this is 0 and this is 10 I have to guess where it lies and I'm guessing that it was 6 give or take 1 could have been 5 could have been 7 somewhere between 5 and 7 if I just say for this one that the answer was 6 that means that's my guess I have to say 6.0 indicating that I know that it was good to within a whole centimeter but I'm guessing at a tenth of a centimeter and this is still fairly large and I can imagine well so I'm gonna say that it's 0.2 that's give or take 0.2 there I don't want to say for this one is just six I want to say 6.00 because I can clearly see that it did not make it up to 6.1 or down to 5.9 I know that I know that number there is zero I'm guessing at this number and because those divisions are so small that's where I'm going to half the smallest division if you had a graduated cylinder here and you look at this you say hey that's pretty um, we're gonna call that 60 milliliters well if you write down 60 milliliters that's your last non-zero digit you would be implying that, that was give or take 10 millimeters this is in the tenths position or sorry tens position so our guesses would be to the tens position 
And I think we can do better than that. We don't. We can clearly see it's not down here at 50 or up at 70. Maybe you wrote down 60 and you were in, wanting to imply that that was your guess, that it was give or take one millimeter. Um, I'm not going to go into detail now on how to do that, but in our next video with sig figs, I'll show you how to do that. But I still think that's not quite good enough because we can imagine half the smallest division. So I would say 60.0 give or take um, 0.5 millimeters, and that's half the smallest division. Okay, because the smallest division here is ones in this case. Now, a trap you might fall into is if you look at this, that looks like it's about four and a quarter. And if I drew divisions in there, you would see that it did fall exactly on four and a quarter. We can't add anything to the ruler. We have to take the ruler as it is given. So if you saw that and thought that was four and a quarter, you would be tempted to say 4.25 was the measurement of that. But remember, this number you knew for certain, that number you're saying you knew for certain, but you were only guessing at that number there. And you can't. You can only guess to half the smallest division. The divisions are ones, so we can guess to a half of that. Or uh, typically, and I'm saying that because it's a little bigger, maybe I can do a smidge better than a half. Instead of 0.5, I think I can do 0.3. Um, also, this was a guess. Uh, we rounded down. We could have also rounded up and said 4.3 plus or minus 0.3. Either of those measurements are fine, fine measurements for that yellow line. Well, I don't want to imply that we're always going to be using meter sticks. We're going to be using other instruments as well. So let's look at this pressure gauge measured in bars. The first thing we have to see is that it, this is 0.5, so that's 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4, and that's 0.5. And then it's broken up into smaller units there. So if that's 0.3, that's 0.35. And I, ha and I can guess to one half the smallest division. Half the smallest division, well, the smallest division is 0.05. So I can guess to 0.025. But i got to be careful. I don't want to write down that answer halfway between 3.0 and 3.5 because it's saying that I can that I know the two for certain and I'm guessing there. I'm really guessing at that two. So I would say that's 0.33, give or take, and instead of 0.025, I'm rounding that up to 0.03. If our guess is in the hundredths position, our plus or minus value also has to be in the hundredths position. We do a lab at the very beginning of the school year that uh, measures the speed of sound. We take a little clicker and make a sharp little sound, introduce it into this, and that sound passes a microphone. It bounces off the cap and comes past the microphone for a second time as an echo. And so this is when the microphone recorded the sound, and this is when the echo returned. And we want to find the speed of sound. Well, we have to know the distance, and we have to know the time. Well, if I measure from the cap here, do we measure to the center of the microphone? Uh, the leading edge or the trailing edge, where does that pickup of sound correspond to that distance? Not really sure. So even though our meter stick could go to within half a millimeter, I think the best we could do was measuring give or take a centimeter. So 145 centimeters, there was a whole other meter stick added on top of this one. So 145 give or take one centimeter but because the sound went there and back, it was twice that distance, and then your uncertainty got doubled as well. There's some really cool devices out there that um, gets you very, very, very precise measurements, and vernier calipers are one of them. You could place an object in between here, and it, this thing slides back and forth, and you can measure that really well. Or you could use this to measure the inside diameter of like a PVC cap or something. This is absolutely ingenious on how to use these. So let me show you this area here. The ingenuity comes in what's called a vernier scale. 
What happens is when this is closed all the way down, this line here lines up to zero. So most of your decimals are read, are read by where this line hits that scale here. But notice that we got 10 divisions from here to here, but nine of those divisions are equal to 10 divisions down here. So when those two line up and those two line up, nothing else lines up. Okay, so if we open this thing up and measure here, it's where this line hits the scale there. It's two point, and this won't make sense just yet, but it's 2.000, give or take 0 0.005 centimeters. Okay, so it's a little hard to see when it's like this, but let me close that down a smidge. It's again where this line here hits that scale. I can clearly see it's one, it's past one, didn't make it up to 0.2. I can also clearly see that it made it past 0.9. But typically, I would have to guess where that fell. But notice that these two lines line up, and clearly none of these other lines line up. Well, that's the third. That's one, two, three. That's the third division on the lower scale. So I can clearly see that that's a three. And if I had to guess at that, I may have guessed that that fell on the third division there. Because I can clearly see that that's a guess, sorry, because I can clearly see that's a three, I can, that three is no longer a guess. I'm not guessing at the three. I have to guess one digit past that. So, uh, and I can guess to half the smallest division there. So give or take five right there. Let's do that again. Let's close this down and see what the measurement is here. Okay, it's where this line hits that to get most of our measurements. So clearly it's one, and that's 1.1, 1 .1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, definitely 1.3 something. If you had to guess, you may have guessed that was eight or nine um, in between there, but notice that those two line up and nothing else lines up. That's the eighth division down here, so that's an eight. I'm not guessing at that, I am guessing one place past that, and 0 .05, 0 0.005 centimeters would be um, the best I could do. One more time, we'll close it down here. Um, I can clearly see that it's a zero point, and it made it a little past the five there. Okay, but these two line up, and nothing else lines up, so I'm going to say that's the first division, so I can clearly see that's a one there. I'm not guessing here, I'm guessing one step past that and halfway on either side of that. All right, those were vernier calipers. Another really ingenious thing is called a micrometer or a micrometer. Micro is a millionth of a meter. And that's what this thing can measure to within a millionth of a meter. So when we place something here, and this is a screw that we can turn down and, and expand back, but we get a lot, most of our digits by turning this thing, um, one of our digits we get where the edge of this hits this upper scale. So this would be one millimeter, two millimeters, three, four, and five millimeters. So I can see that it's five point something. We get our other decimals by where the dial hits here, where, where the numbers on the dial here hit this line. And this hit at 25, 26, 27, 27 point maybe nine. So the 279 is what we're getting off of this dial here. There's 50 numbers all the way around this thing. And you'd have to turn that dial around two full times to uh, move the dial one millimeter. So if we measured something that was a little bigger, my edge there comes here and that, that line was covered before, but now it's exposed. So if we get past a half a line here, we know that we've passed half of a millimeter. 
So it's going to be half a millimeter more. Uh, so 5.779, just half a millimeter more. The 2 turned into a 7 because that dial passed that half a millimeter mark. Okay. All right, let's talk briefly about whether our measurements are good or bad. If a measurement that is off by a mile, is it good or bad? Well, it depends. If I measure from the center of the Earth to the center of the moon, 238,855 miles, and I'm off by one mile out of 238,855 miles, that's just this decimal. And if I multiply by 100, I can turn it into a percent. We call that percent error. Percent means out of 100, per 100. So this was one out of that number there. This is that out of 100. Okay, it's just the tiniest percent error, so I would say that's good. If we measure, is a measurement that is off by a mile good or bad? So if the measurement is 4.97 miles and I'm off by a mile, well, that's one mile out of 4.97. That's the same thing as 0.201. And if I multiply by 100, that is 20 out of 100. Okay, so I would say that's bad. My percent error was bad there. So just telling my, just by reporting how far you are off, off by a mile, it doesn't indicate whether it's good or bad. It's much better to report your answer as a percentage of how far you are off. And that's known as percent error of difference. And the way you calculate it is you take what's called the, the accepted value, what is generally accepted, minus what you got. So if you take accepted minus what you got, the obtained, that's how far your answer is different. That's how far you are off. If you divide that by the accepted value and multiply by 100, you can turn it into a percent. The lines here and here are absolute values, which means we don't care if it's a positive number or a negative number. We just look at the positive value of that. If you were going to do this on a spreadsheet, you could type in a formula where you say equals ABS stands for absolute value. You can take the accepted minus the obtained and divide it by the accepted. In this example, the obtained was bigger than the accepted. So if I subtracted a bigger number, that would have been negative. So I would have gotten a negative answer but the absolute value just turns it into a positive. So back to Zebulon Pike and Stephen Long. If I were to calculate their percent error of difference, what is generally accepted as true minus what they got, uh, Zebulon Pike would have had that, but I turn it into a percent, and I get 31.64% error, not very good. If I find Stephen Long's measurement, it was 18.47%, so still pretty bad, but better than Zebulon Pike's. When we measure in the lab, I'm going to make, ask that you always get less than 5% error. One last thing before we go, precision versus accuracy. If we had a measurement and it's accepted that 6.0 is the measurement, and I measured 6.0 plus or minus 0.2, well, that measurement is both precise and accurate. Okay, and, and I'll go through an example so you can see the difference between those two. If I had measured something and it said it was 4 plus or minus 2, well, that's neither precise nor accurate. And if I measured something that was 4.0 plus or minus 0.2, I would say that is precise, but not very accurate. And then if I measure this number here at six point or six plus or minus two, I would say that is accurate, but it's not very precise. Okay, 
meaning if we average it out, it's right there in the middle, but it extends to either side. So accuracy is how close our measurement is to the reality. Precision is how big of a spread or how big of a plus or minus value there is on this. When the plus or minus value is small, it's precise. When the plus or minus value is big, it's not very precise. And that's a little bit about measurement.